All right, welcome back, my friends. We're talking about today another thermodynamics problem. We're going to work a uh, kind of a fluid flow problem. It's really just a modified manometer problem, similar to the last one we worked. And then we have a fluid flow here through this upper tube, but there's an orifice in the middle that's restricting the flow. And so the pressure is going to be greater on this side of the orifice than it is on this side, which in turn pushes a column of mercury where there is a differential height there, okay? And we're asked to find what's the difference in pressure in this side and that side. So let's see if we can do that. So step one is, <laughs> what is it? Let's draw free body diagrams, okay? So here is side A, okay? We'll call this side A. That's over, over here, okay? And then we have a side B, which is over here. Whoop. which is water, but then it has a little mercury under that. Oh. Oh. There we go. Okay. And uh, what are we given here? We're given that the height here is H1 is 34 centimeters. I guess we could write that on there. Okay. So this guy, 34 centimeters and h2 is 29 centimeters so this guy over here 29 centimeters which means that this here the height of the mercury has got to be five centimeters doesn't it if that's 29 because it's got to equal 34 then i'm given the density of water and the specific gravity for uh, mercury okay so let's see how we can make all this work to our advantage and solve this little problem here so Let's start with our free, be, free body diagram. The one thing we know is that the pressure along this line, I'm in mercury here, I'm in mercury there, has got to be the same. And remember, we'll remember a couple things over here. We'll remember that uh, pressure is force over area. So we're talking about a force exerted on these columns, right? Let's solve for force. So force is equal to P times A, okay? That's one thing we can remember. Another thing that I want you to remember is this. Uh, pressure is going to be in pascals. But what is a pascal? Do you remember? A pascal is a newton per meter squared. And it's a little bit confusing. We're, when we work this out, we're going to get some kind of wacky units. But we're not going to be fooled by that because you could rewrite this unit here as, a, you know, a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, and then there's that meter squared there, right? So that's kind of a weird unit. So that meter and one of those cancels out. So I'll wind up with a kilogram per meter second squared, okay? And really, that is another way just to say that's a Pascal, okay? So don't be fooled when you see this wacky unit here, and you're like, I don't know what a kilogram per meter times second squared, I don't know what that is. It's a Pascal, okay? So don't be tricked by that little trick there. And then one more thing we remember is this. The density uh, times volume is equal to mass, right? Now that's, that's an equation we learned a long time ago back in physics class. So let's see if we need to use that guy as well, okay? So let's, let's label our free body diagram. What's acting on that column of water, okay? Well, pushing up on it is gonna be, is gonna be the force, this guy, the force, from the mercury, right? So we'll call him PHGA, okay? Uh, and this guy over here can be PHGA, okay? Oh, pushing up. There you go. Okay, so if that's pushing up, then what's pushing down on the system, okay? So up here, we have P at point A times A, and then over here, we have the force P B times A, right? Because the, the force over here is gonna, is gonna be different than the force over here, right? That's what's causing that differential, okay? Is that it? No, let's don't forget about the weight of the column itself. So let's draw that kind of off to the side here, okay? The weight of the H2O, right? And then what do we have over here? Well, we have a little bit of weight from H2O, and then we also have a little bit of weight from Mercury, which is Hg, right? Now we've got a good free body diagram drawn. Look how nice that is. Okay, let's see if we can solve this now. 
okay? And all we're going to do is write the equations of equilibrium for this, and then the equations of equilibrium for that. And since this equals that, we probably can set those two equal to each other, and maybe we can solve for something. So let's, let's see what we get. So equation number one is going to come from this system, and equation number two will come from this system over here, okay? So number one, P, H, G, A, right? The up stuff has to equal the down stuff, right? So equals what? Um, P, A times A plus W, H, 2, O. Okay. And then equation number two is for this guy. Same thing, P, H, G, A equals, uh-oh, P, B, a uh, plus W H two O plus plus what um, W Mercury right okay all right let's see if we can expand this okay all right what is what is weight well weight is just mg right so we have P a times A plus um, M G, uh, and this is H2O, right? H2O. P A times A, oh, B, sorry, plus um, the weight, again, M H2O. G plus M H G uh, times G, right? Okay. And then what is mass? So, I mean, we don't know the mass, so I've got to just write it in a different form. But I do know all these kind of densities over here. And so I'm just going to rewrite mass as rho times V. Okay, so let's rewrite that one more time. P A times A plus, okay, so the M is going to turn into rho H2O um, times V times V. Oh, what is volume? What is volume equal to? You know what volume is? That's just going to be uh, area times height, right? Let's put a little H there so it'll be consistent, okay? Area times height. So we got rho times V, which is rho times A times H. So times A times H. Do we know H of the water for system number one? Yes, it's uh, it's 34. So times 34, and that's centimeters, right? I know that a bunch of this stuff up here is in meters, and that's in centimeters, so be careful we convert that, okay? Um, times G, right? Don't forget our G on there. Are we good? We got rho, we got volume, we got g. Okay, I think we're good. One more time. Here we go. P, B, A, plus. It's really easy to leave one of these terms out, so be super careful, right? So mg for water is going to be the same as this guy. So rho H2O times A times. Now, what's the height of the water in the system number two? The height of the water in system number two is 29. 29 centimeters times G. Plus, we got to do this guy. No, we got to do that guy, which is the mercury part. So, plus, um, here we go rho HG times A times the height of the mercury. Oh, that's five centimeters. We know that. 5 centimeters times G. Okay. Now, what we need to do is since these two things are the same, this is the same as that, then we can set this here equal to this here. Okay? So, and, well, let's write it down here. You know what? Every term has an A in it. You have an A, 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 A. So what are the A's going to do? Divide out of the whole thing. So we can ignore those A's, right? Um, and then also, what am I asked to do here? 
I know this is larger, so what I really want is PA minus PV to come up with the, the difference, the pressure drop across that orifice. So I want PA minus PV. So I'm going to write this that way. So here I go. So PA, and remember all the A's canceled out. So you're gone, 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 right? So PA, that's that guy. And then I'm going to move this guy to the other side. So minus PB is equal to, okay, I got to equal to all that stuff, right? Rho H2O times 29 centimeters times G, okay, plus rho of HG times 5 centimeters times G. And then this one, I had to move from the PA side, right? I had to move it to the other side, so it's going to be minus, this is the algebra stuff here, right? Rho H2O times 34 times G, okay? Now here's the good stuff, right? In this equation here, that's a number, that's a number, 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 number. But I don't know you, I don't know you, I don't know you. Well, I do know that guy, right? He's given. That's the density of water. So this guy here is 1,000 um, kilograms per meter cubed, okay? So what is this guy going to turn into? How many centimeters are in a meter? Um, how many? A hundred? So I gotta move the decimal over 10, 100, two places, so 0.29 meters, okay? Again, this guy here is gonna be 0 0.05 meters. This guy here is gonna be 0.34 meters. Um, you are a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. That's a cube. And then what is that guy? We gotta get that guy right there, okay? Remember one more equation from our last video, and that is our specific gravity equation, right? So specific gravity is rho of Hg divided by rho of H2O, right, is equal to, and for that, it's equal to 13.6, okay? And we know this guy here, right? So the a, rho Hg, rho Hg, is going to be equal to 13,600, um, what's the units? Kilogram per meter cubed, okay? So that little trick there gets me the one last piece of the puzzle that I need, which is this guy right there. You are 13,600 uh, kilogram per meter cubed, okay? And so, and so I have these kind of bits here. So I have that bit plus this bit plus this bit, right? Ooh, let's put them in a different color so you can see them, okay? Let's put them in a different color because we're just going to turn these bits here into a number, right? So I've got, come on green marker, I've got all of this that needs to turn into a number, this turn into a number, and this turn into a number. So we're just going to need our calculator, aren't we? Okay. So here we go. I've got my handy dandy calculator right here. Here we go, calculator on. Oh, so this bit here, what's it going to give me for units? Because I have this. I have kilogram per meter cubed times meter times gravity, which is meters per second squared. Okay. And so let's see. Meter, meter, gets rid of two of those, and I'm left, that's going to leave me with kilogram um, divided by meters times second squared. Ooh, I know what that is. Bam, right? So that whole thing there, a Pascal. That's a Pascal, that's a Pascal, at least for units, right? So we know our answer is going to be in Pascal. So let's get our answer here. Ready? So 1,000 times 0.29 times... 9.81 is equal to 2,844, so this equals 2,844.9, okay, Pascals, plus, okay, the next one here, 13,600 times 0 .05 times 
9.81 equals 6670.8, 6670.8 pascals. And then the last one over here, 1,000 times um, 0.34 times 9.81 equals 3,000. That's a minus, though. Minus 3,300 and uh, three threes. 335.4. And all that's going to be Pascals, okay? And so here comes our final answer, equals 2844.9 plus 6670.8 minus 3335.4 equals 6180.3 Pascals. Or, right? We could write it as 6.18 kilopascals. And that is the pressure difference, right, from A to B. Okay? Wow. So kind of another modified manometer problem. I hope this helps. Let's talk again next video.